Nutrition. Hey, YouTube. Dark Nutrition eighty four here, and welcome to Q and A number thirty nine. Let's kick this off. Oh, and I remember to plug my mic in this time. Um. So the first two questions are from Matt and Alison Welch. God, I love how they always get in there first. Um, one, Alison and I watched an archive video on Yu-Gi-Oh! before the manga and anime was created. It stated that originally Yugi's ace signature and favourite card was supposed to be Black Luster Soldier. Do you think this would have changed his duels big time in any way? And do you think this would change your favourite card in any way? I feel like it would have changed his duels quite a lot, um, considering it's a ritual monster, and ritual monsters generally require more resources than a normal monster. Um, I, I don't know how consistently he would have brought it out. Um, Um, now, um, there is one printing of it, which we didn't get in English, which, um, uh, where it's a normal monster, you know, 3k vanilla, just like Blue Eyes White Dragon, which I believe is meant to be worth, like, thousands, if not millions of dollars, or pounds, um, I mean, if BLS was originally a normal monster and not a ritual monster, um, then I feel like his duels would have played out the same way, um, and maybe uh, there would have been different support for Black Luster Soldier. Um, uh, as a ritual, I feel like it still would have been kind of tricky to bring out, um, as you need like at least three cards, um, Black Luster Soldier itself, uh, Black Luster Ritual and uh, just a level 8 monster, like either that or like one or two other monsters, so yeah that's at least four cards and uh, uh, it's just too specific. Um, yeah, it would have changed things big time. Um, uh, I don't know if it would have uh, become my favourite card though. Um, if it was a normal monster, then yes, um, Black Luster Soldier would be my favourite card instead of Dark Magician. Um, but if BLS was my favourite card anyway, um, I'd still have to dedicate a lot of resources to setting up, bringing it out. Um, then again, I guess it wouldn't have been too difficult, because we have um, you know, the standard free ritual searches, Manju being the best one, plus Senju and Sonic Bird. So it would have been a case of throwing in, uh, like, a playset of all three in a deck, and then boom, there you go. Um, maybe Yugi would have done the same later on in the anime, I don't know. Um, and then later on, um, over the years, um, like, I would have got boxes and maybe even a case of Dimension of Chaos, which of course uh, gave us the Black Luster Soldier support, you know, Super Soldier, uh, the Knights, um, I, I feel like I definitely would have played Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning, like a lot earlier on, um, and I guess maybe had more success in my duels over the years. Um, yeah, I would have dedicated a lot to making it work. Um, 
and put my heart and soul into it more than any other deck. Um, as I did with Dark Magician. Uh, two. Out of all the decks you're building for your girlfriend, which one does she like the most, or will like the most? Well, it's very hard for her to say, because she hasn't uh, played with any of those decks yet. Um, like, so far she's only played with my, uh, my own Magician Girl deck, and that Battle Royale um, that we had when she was visiting. Um, uh, but what I will say, though, um, is that she thinks the Karibos and Melfis are very cute and adorable. She finds the Magician Girls cool, and uh, she's very fond of Judgment Dragon. Um, uh, as I said before, it's one of her favourite cards, so it made sense to build Light Swarms for her. Um, so, um, maybe she can give a definite answer, like, later on. Um, of course, we haven't yet had any practice with um, uh, the Magician Girl deck that I built for her. Um, or the other decks, because they're not, still not finished yet. But we plan to have a mirror match um, off-camera, of course. I don't plan to record any duels with her until she's more comfortable with um, playing the decks and more comfortable with the rules and you know just has a better understanding of how they work and then I'll record some games. Um, I also think what I'll do um, is um, have me use one of her decks as well while she focuses on learning one at a time. Um, uh, depending on which one she wants to use first or use the most. Um, I think that will definitely um, help her out, you know, relearn the game and relearn all her decks. Um, um, one thing that was said to me was um, it's best not to um, have her play so many at once um, at first. Um, which is fair enough, I get that, but um, yeah, I'll still do what I can to make um, the learning experience as easy as I can for her and just make it fun. Um, next question is from Yu-Gi-Oh! for Autism. What do you think of my new video? Uh, it's very cool, very nice, um, maybe a bit over the top in one place, but other than that, um, it's a good video. I like it. Um, and then we've got kind of an essay here from uh, Chris Reinhardt. Um, he has a couple of questions, um, and he says, Hey Richie, sorry I haven't been commenting, uh, commenting on Q&As. Uh, wife and I had a baby girl and we've been busy for her. Uh, yeah, I did, although I did say it in the comments here, I'll say this again, congratulations, like, everyone in the comments congratulate him and his wife, like, that is fantastic. Um, but I had a couple of dual requests, I wanted to get your thoughts on something that I've been thinking about focusing on moving forward. Um, so, yeah, they're both GX dual requests. Uh, Jaden versus Asta and Jaden versus Zane. Well, your requests will be noted. Um, I will do what I can to get round to those as soon as I can. Um, and the next question. Uh, so I've been thinking lately, like you have already done, that I'm kind of tired of trying to play competitively at locals and just want to have fun when I do. So like you, I'm done building modern decks that Konami keeps bringing out that locks out the opponent. Here as of late, 
the best ways that I've been able to enjoy the game has been strictly building and playing different character decks and past format decks. And since I know you enjoy character decks and past format decks, I was wondering if, and this is something that I'm curious if you've thought about doing this, you were thinking about just focusing your channel on just past and character decks and duels moving forward. For myself, I'm just updating a couple of my favourite decks and I imagine you would do that with your signature three decks to current format, but the only decks outside of my three, I'm just focusing on character decks and past formats. So what is your thoughts on doing something like this? I just know with some of my friends that we really enjoy past formats and character duels, would like to hear from you on this kind of topic. Appreciate your thoughts and the content. Keep it up. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I have been kind of thinking about that. Um, yeah, um, there have been a lot of times where I tried to just uh, you know cut down on decks and only play Dark Magician, Elemental Heroes, and Rainbow Neos. You know, in terms of current format decks which I want to get back to eventually, but the problem is I keep being tempted to build all these new decks and come back to old ones. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Um, but having just those three as the only current format decks will be something I want to do eventually. Um, and then, and any other decks I have will be past format and character tools character decks rather. Um, so yeah, we do have similar ideas there um, and I will update my signature free um, if ever new support comes out. Um, and like I said in another episode there were times where I thought about just quitting modern Yu-Gi-Oh altogether and just playing with past format decks, preferably ones uh, from after Yatalok format and before um, the Synchro era, basically. Um, uh, but then I'd probably miss playing my Super 3 as current format decks, and then uh, there wouldn't have been much point uh, making the decks I'm making for my girlfriend, and um, I'd hardly get to play anymore. Um, well, except maybe Express Gaming and James, um, you know, they're, cause they're the only other ones with past format decks. Um, <coughs> yeah, James uh, definitely took a similar approach recently. Um, he, he doesn't have any current format decks at the moment, just a bunch of past format and speed duel decks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but he might um, go back to current format. We'll see. Um, and yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um, and then there's ten questions here from Gungna. Uh, hello there, General Richardson. <laughs> A legion of questions are awaiting to be defeated. Ah, <laughs> oh, love it. Um, one, which Jaden is your favourite Jaden? Jaden without Neos, Jaden with Neos, Supreme King Jaden, or Jaden slash Ubel? Um, I think definitely Jaden without Neos. Um, of course, I have nothing against Neos and the Neospatians, obviously. Um, but, um, I feel like there was more of a proper structure uh, to his elemental hero deck. Um, like, uh, besides Doc Catapulter, like, he had a proper theme and strategy going, and then I feel like when he added, um, Neos and the Neospatians, as well as Card Trooper, Dandelion, that starbird thing and Gallus the star beast card block and card ejector. I feel like he had too many themes going on at once. Um, and obviously, if a deck like that was made in real life, it would be 
spooky as hell. Um, but then again, bricks don't seem to affect protagonists usually, um, since they never ever brick. Well, except Yuya, um, that one time where he faced um, that girl playing the fortune fairies and kept calling him darling, darling. God, that was annoying. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of preferred it this way. Um, and um, a lot of his old, old heroes just didn't see that much play um, from series two onwards. Like, uh, Rampart Blaster, Tempest, Mudball Man. Um, and even if they did, it would be on very rare occasions. Two. Do you think the normal Doom Monsters series would be lame if you never got rid of Exodia via Weevil? Um, Exodia's flame every villain. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't think it would be. Um, I think it's kind of more exciting um, seeing him do without Exodia, and, like especially. Um, like against the rare hunter who also had Exodia. Um, like maybe it would make some duels a bit easier. Um, but um, I feel like without it, it adds more intensity to the duels. Um, I guess if he kept it Exodia, it wouldn't come up um, all the time though. Um, Maybe it would, it would every once in a while, but I feel like later on it just wouldn't be the main strategy. Um, of course, maybe he'd win that duel against Kaiba on top of the castle with Exodia, considering that crush card infected his deck. Uh, three, wouldn't it be cool if there was a combination between uh, Kaiba's ABC Union Monster and Yugi's Magnet Warriors. Um, I assume you mean um, <coughs> ABC Dragon Buster and the fusion between Valkyrian and uh, Berserkirion. What will the effects and cards look like? Um, I'm not so sure I would like it. It's like if it's a fusion of those two particular fusion monsters, because uh, I hate ABC Dragon Buster, and I hate the Magnet Warrior Fusion. Uh, Dragon Buster is just too disruptive and too easy to summon, too difficult to get rid of, basically. Um, hence why I absolutely hate ABC. It's like, as I said in an earlier episode annoying to play against. Um, it's not many cards can out it. Um, only Kaiju is in system down, whereas I hate monsters that negate everything, hence why I've ranted about Dragoon so much. Um, I feel like if there was a fusion, it would um, probably have either both effects, you know, um, a banish a card on the field effect, um, which would be a quick effect, and it would be a negate of everything. Either that, or it would be like invoked Mechaba, and it would just negate and banish. Um, if we're talking about XYZ Dragon Cannon and Valkyrian, that would be a different story. Um, Um, it would probably um, have some kind of cart destroying effect and have like maybe 4,000, 4,500 or 5,000 attack um, ha and have some kind of immunity like it'd be uh, I think being immune from effects that target and destroy would be fine um, that would be cool 4 um, I really want more 
um, Silent Magician, Horse, the Black Flame Dragon stuff. Armed Dragon got so much, where is the love for then? Your guess is as good as mine. Like every now and then I see someone in the comments of a video asking for horse support. Um, I feel like we'll get something eventually, because over the last two years we've been getting a lot of legacy support for older archetypes, so I'm pretty sure Silent Magician and Silent, uh, sorry, Horus will get something eventually. Uh, not that I want Horus to get support though, since Horus level 8 was so annoying back in the day. Um, like, that Horus Decree deck was horrible. Like, no spells and traps? How is that fair? Like, so that only leaves me with monster effects. I think, and I think back then the only ways to counter it were tribe infecting virus, DD warrior lady, old vindictive magician, and even time bloody wizard for fuck's sake. Uh, Oh yeah, there is also Blackluster Soldier Envoy at the beginning, I suppose. Um, I, I'm actually surprised that um, Horus Level 8 still isn't seeing play. Um, then again, I suppose it would have been power crept like, over the years. Um, and there's just more ways to counter it now. So I don't know. Um, five. I see that you purchase your cards online for you or Emma. Um, hey, not just online, I do buy from Dead Universe Comics as well. Um, no, because gotta support those locals. Um, is there a way that I can send you cards that you need coming from Germany, but they will be in English, of course? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, like, if there's any cards I desperately need, um, I'll. I'll consider messaging you, um, well, contacting you, um, I think you said you have Discord, right, um, so yeah, um, there is Discord and Instagram, which you can find me on, um, and then, uh, I'm sure we can work something out, uh, six. Which actor is your favourite and why? Why? Real films and person. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, definitely. Um, as, um, yeah, he's just such a cool guy in general, a cool actor, uh, particularly in the Terminator franchise. Um, I guess that's. Uh, as simple as that really. I mean, I have seen him, uh, his other films of course, um, you know, Junior, The Expendables Trilogy, uh, Commando, Predator, um, Total Recall, um, Jingle All The Way. Um, but you know, for me, the Terminator film franchise is where it's at. Two seconds. Right, and I'm back. Um, so yeah, Terminator films are where it's at. Um, I even wanted to get a short, a leather jacket um, because of him. And uh, of course, I got one for Christmas in 2003, and I've had it ever since. And it's one of the things that Emma loves me wearing. Um, and if I wear uh, dark jeans and um, my boots, then uh, I kind of pull off the Terminator. Excuse me, Terminator look. Well, maybe not so much nowadays because uh, my hair is uh, long, and uh, I'm not like proper built up and hench like. Uh, Arnie is. Um, he's a former bodybuilder, um, whereas I just have an average body. Um, 
but I still pull off that Terminator look anyway. Um, seven. Will you play the Dark Magician Girl in Ghost Rare as soon as you get her? No, uh, as soon as I get her, she's going in my Ghost Rare collection. Um, yeah, that's why I want to get all the Ghost Rares from Ghosts from the Past too. Uh, put every single one in that collection, including uh, Dark Magician Girl. Um, uh, I'm perfectly happy playing the ones I already play anyway. Like the secret rare one I have for Magician's Force has nostalgic value to it. So I got that for Christmas in 2005, um, and one of the ultra rares that I play in my Magician Girl deck is the first Dark Magician Girl I ever got. Um, so it also has sentimental value. Um, so I'd rather just keep playing those ones. Um, this is just like um, when George, on a couple of occasions, asked me why I'm not playing the Ghost Rare Winged Dragon of Ra in my Egyptian God deck. Um, it's because, well, that's part of a collection. Um, I have no intention of actually playing it in a duel. Um, eight. <coughs> Oh, pardon me. Uh, did you think about my advice to put a small Albaz engine with Albaz Fusion in your uh, Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl deck? You can uh, bring out the Dragonites easily by fusing Light Hex Sealed Fusion and Albaz into uh, Albion, and Albion will summon one of the Dragonites, all with only one branded fusion. Um, I did, but um, I feel like there's just too much going on uh, if I do that. Um, I'd rather just uh, keep my Dark Magician deck pure rather than throw in other archetypes into the mix and have too much going on at once. Um, I say that, and I used to play the Spellbook engine, but that's different, because um, that's a very consistent engine, which makes pretty much any spell caster deck consistent. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know, um, and I feel like now that we have Tamias, the United Dragon, it's probably not really necessary. Uh, running the Albaz engine, since I can get out Dark Magician the Dragonite, or even Amulet Dragon, just like that, no problem. Um, nine. Did you ever play or watch Sonic XE? It's a horror Sonic game slash video. Um, I've never played it, but I have watched it. Yeah, so I know of it. Um, so yeah, I've seen that and. Uh, Boy, it is creepy. Um, I also did like watching that final showdown between uh, the actual Sonic and Sonic XE. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, in fact, some uh, that actually gave me some inspiration towards uh, that Halloween film thing I did uh, back in October. Um, yeah. And uh, final question 10. When can we expect more local tournament videos? Why does everyone keep asking me about tournaments? Um, like, well, mainly if I'm playing in one. Surely everyone should know full well by now that I don't play in tournaments anymore. Well, not proper local tournaments anyway. Um, I'm put off from playing in them. Um, now, obviously, um, well, whenever more speed tournaments and uh, 
Pegasus Challenge tournaments happen, or if Dead Universe Comics decides to actually start up past format tournaments, then I will definitely do those and you know do um, before vlogs, the actual duel videos, and even the tournament reports. Um, yeah, that'll definitely happen if that's the case, but in regards to normal local tournaments, I don't do those anymore. Um, I, uh, it's, well, I just don't like them anymore. Um, <clears throat> of course, that being said, though, um, I've been in two minds about it recently. I mean, I kind of do, but kind of don't at the same time. Um, see, in a way I feel kind of bad for not playing in them anymore for various reasons. Um, it, now, um, I have had my fair share of success in tournaments in the past though. Um, uh, whether I'd actually win them or at least top in them, but um, here's where I feel kind of bad. Um, there have been a lot of good things about tournaments over the years, like I've met most of my friends through them, um, and um, uh, my good friend Derek Del's Logos 3D Printing, uh, go check out his 3D printing channel, um, he once said to me that I make his various elite tournaments a lot more fun and very entertaining. I guess just because of my personality and the kinds of decks that I usually play, um, which is original, fun, rogue, non-meta and non-anti-meta decks, um, you know, ranging from Dark Magician, Elemental Heroes, Blue Eyes White Dragon, uh, Generic warriors, generic machines, neo spaceians, uh, generic dinosaurs. Like once upon a time, um, and this was like uh, eight years before that structure deck of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno come out. Well, eight or no, it'd be nine years because um, I played my dinosaur deck in the third tournament of 2008. Um, so yeah, decks like that and just because of my personality. Um, and I like to think I do the same for uh, the Dead Universe Comics tournaments as well. Um, uh, um, the other thing is, it is very satisfying if I do beat a meta deck or an anti-meta deck with any of my usual decks, like mainly Dark Magician um, and on occasion Rainbow Neos, um, sometimes I would pull it off with uh, Elemental Heroes. Like, I even remember the first tournament where I finished second with it, I beat Perfect Circle Monarch in the top four, uh, which is something I never thought I'd do. Um, I even once beat Mermails, which didn't have an extra deck, with Evil You Bell Hero of all things. Evil You Bell Hero, and it's not even one of my better hero decks. Um, if anything, it's one of the most bricky. Although it has improved a lot over the years. Um, <clears throat> and there were the occasions where I once beat Demise OTK, full power ABCs, and full power True King Dinos with Neo Spaceians. Neo fucking Spaceians. Um, achievements that I never thought I'd pull off. And uh, this was like a couple of years before we got Elemental Hero Nebula Neos and the support from Savage Strike. Um, Hell, even the victory against Demise OTK was like four years before Miracle Contact became a real card. That was just insane. Like, 
it's very satisfying for me and uh, it's satisfying for people to watch especially you guys um, and uh, when it comes to things like this uh, I like to think that I've been regarded as this Yu-Gi-Oh hero just standing up to the meta with my usual decks um, and then of course there's the fact that uh, there are friends of mine who still play in tournaments who uh, haven't played against me for ages or just hardly ever play me nowadays like uh, Bill Z, Connor, uh, even Webers 5 um, Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Um, but yeah, um, and apparently I haven't played against Billsy or Silver Cyclone in a tournament game for eight years. That's crazy. And I feel kind of bad because by not playing in tournaments anymore, I feel like I'm just disappointing everyone. Almost everyone, I should say, um, yeah, and just not doing any of these things. Um, so um, sometimes I think maybe I should play in tournaments again, you know, just for the hell of it. But at the same time, I, I really don't want to, um, you know, due to the reasons why I stopped playing in them. Um, just due to getting really fed up of various things like the meta, the anti-meta or just any deck which does something that basically doesn't let me play the game like whether it's an OTK, FTK, lockdown slash control deck or a troll deck <coughs> uh, yeah, there's that um, just Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, Ash Blossom and Mystic Mine existing, um, not drawing my sided cards when I need them, getting fucked over by end of match procedure, and just dealing with players who take the game far too seriously in some way or another, like um, just ranging from only caring about winning, having too much of a competitive mindset or, or just being absolutely toxic. Um, I'm not saying that there's toxic players at Dead Uni. Um, like, there's no one like that, don't worry about it. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, um, basically I just, I just don't want to deal with any of these things anymore. And, I sure as hell don't want any of these things brought into the casual side. Um, like, I just want to play the game and have some fun. Like, it doesn't matter if I win or lose my games. As long as I have a chance to do something and get to play, that's all I care about. Um, so yeah, it was a very long answer, but um, hopefully that does answer the question. And that is it for questions in this episode. I feel like that was a pretty long episode. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for your guys' questions. And remember, if you've got any other questions you want to ask me, post them in the comments section down below. And remember, I do these episodes every Tuesday afternoon or evening UK time. So be sure to get your questions in before then so that you don't miss out. Thanks again. Stay safe. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Shisha. Sure.